Hey, family. Well, you know, you all went with me to the um, creek yesterday. And I just wanted to talk about going to the creek, which also, you know, uh, uh, brings up the subject matter of hoodoo when I'm, when I think about it. You know what I'm saying? See, because a lot of the works of hoodoo will come to you uh, subconsciously, meaning that you don't necessarily have to go around asking people, you know, about this and that when it comes to the practice, you know, because guess what? You are your ancestors and all of the thoughts that they thought and everything they done, you know, you, you have a library in your brain of, of, of everything they've done. So you've got your own communication with the dead, so to speak, you know what I'm saying? And so... As I was going there, I was so um, crippled with fear, you know, because I was, I felt like I was doing something. It was a dare, you know, that I could not, you know, um, be a strong practitioner and listen to, you see what I'm saying? The voices of the ancestors as they spoke to me. So I was able to recollect and uh, the next day, like this is the next day, the morning. Uh, now I'm able to collect information, you know, uh, from, 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 from them and understand exactly why they led me there. And because I'm being led to a lot of places that are just unfamiliar to me, but these are places that they have gone, you know what I'm saying, to to do work. So I was led into a tunnel. I don't think it's not necessarily a sewer tunnel. Maybe it was a sewer tunnel, but I was led there and and didn't understand why. Matter of fact, I'm being led to a lot of spooky ass places like up the street. I got to go up there. I got to do what they tell me to do. They want me to go up the street to the, the, the swamps up the street late at night with a lantern, nothing but a lantern. And as you go there, the what, what as you go in those places, they send you, it builds up your courage. And as you build your courage, you become stronger in your work. You see what I'm saying? Your work is stronger as you practice those things that you 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 used to not be able to manifest. You begin to manifest those things. So now if you all are practitioners, you, as you get more seasoned in your work, as time go by, you will be led to some very creepy places. Even now, there's an impression left on me for, for, for doing what I did. There is an impression. Matter of fact, it's, it's, it's just a feeling that just keeps sticking with me. I can just close my eyes. I still see inside that tunnel. Look, let me talk to y'all about this. Long, long ago, our ancestors that practiced this, what we call hoodoo, folk magic, you understand what I'm saying? They, when they were doing some dark work, they went in these type of places. You know what I'm saying? They had to go in the cemeteries late at night and go to sleep there to show them supernatural spirits. You understand? That they were worthy of what they were asking for. So if I wanted to go and kill, because they, they told me I better be paying some attention. This is this is my studies right now. Y'all saw me with my galoshes on. Only they didn't have nothing to go on their feet. And they went through that damn river and did all kind of supernatural work. And people wonder, damn, you know how they was able to go and send a spirit over there to do all of that horrible stuff, burn up them folks' houses and stuff. They had to first themselves take a chance. Like I was taking a chance. But the spirit said, no, you didn't do anything. We're just getting you ready. You got to go there late at night with nothing but a fucking lantern. And you going to have to go down that tunnel some ways. Serious. It's a rite of passage. And if you're dealing with a practitioner and they, they, they ain't able, you understand what I'm saying? 
to be brave enough to go to some of the darkest realms, then they can't call themselves no dog magician or a black magician because a dog magician and a black magician put themselves way out there. And I was like, damn, can I really say I'm a dog magician? It's easy to say, to, to say that here on the camera with my get there dog. You understand? Which a lot of people say, Mom, I'm creeped out about you and that dog. The dog. That's because I'm a dog magician. And I go very dark. I don't I haven't met a woman like me yet in the state of Alabama. That can do some of the darkest things, like go down in tunnels and shit. Go in caves and explore by themselves and shit. I ain't met them yet. I'm gonna get a go cam. Put it on my head and take y'all some of the darkest places. Now, that's for the folks who say that they are dog magician. They say they are hoodoo practitioner. And they say they all these different things, they witches and stuff. Are you really a witch? Can you really go in some of the deepest, like I say, uh, 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 frightening places there is in nature? Cause, and that's another thing I want to talk about. Nature have so many different supernatural creatures in so many different places you know what i'm saying elemental creatures are everywhere the only reason a lot of y'all can't hear them see them because you're so connected to you know the matrix and shit that tv's going constantly you can't hear your thoughts you can't hear the spirits you know and you know at, at the end of the day all you afraid of is yourself when you go in a, a haunted place you're frightened of yourself you know what i'm saying you sit up in a house by yourself you hear noise you frightened of yourself you think you frightened of what's around you but basically all you can hear is yourself when you're in your house all of those noises are connected with you and your spirits that are in your conference hello Sometimes we do we you don't you just don't get this this here just cause you want to be here. You have to be homeless. You have to be hum. I have been homeless. You know I I've been in some of the darkest places y'all to get here where I'm at. It's just like this just didn't come overnight, man. You know what I'm saying? I had to get to scrapping with folks. Have you had to be homeless? Have you been scrapping with folks, scrounging, struggling? This is what gets you here to be a powerful practitioner. I have walked on my feet miles and miles to get where I had to go, to get my children where I had to get them to. <laughs> this is the rice of passage. It's easy to say, I'm a practitioner I'm riding around in a luxury car. and You know what I'm saying? I'm a practitioner living in a house where all you got all the amenities and shit. Living in a neighborhood with all the amenities and shit, you ain't never went nowhere. And you say you're a, you a dog magician? You think you're a dog magician because you have beautiful ornamental jewelry on. You smell good. You look good. Mm -mm. Can you go in them dog places? Hello? <laughs> but uh, Once again, like I said, nature has so many different spirits Um. I have seen the spirits in the trees and the leaves. You know what I'm saying? Every tree, every leaf has its own spirit. You understand? You got spirits, the divine spirits up high, and you got lower spirits in the gates of hell. Dark spirits. They everywhere. You got water spirits. You know, you got the spirits in the rocks and the stones. Yeah, rocks and stones move by themselves. You got rocks and stones with spirits. You know what I'm saying? You got spirits in your plant life. You understand? No matter what type of plant it is, the clouds possess spirits. You got air spirits. You understand what I'm saying? You got the uh, 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 winged Lord spirits that fly the 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 uh, uh, the, the higher. Uh, elements of the earth and then you got some of the lower spirits in the caves so everything has a place because this place is very much alive we always talking about the beginning of this place the end of this place there is no beginning to this place nor is there an end to it okay not for us okay it's just is okay it just is 
we be sitting down trying to come up when when this place was uh, created so many trillions and trillions of years ago is because we have limited understanding of what the hell this is in the first place. So I don't try to understand it because at the end of the day, no one will ever understand anything. I don't care how many times you reincarnate. I mean, that was a very hallowing moment when I went into that cave to face my fears. And there were bats, I know for sure, as you go further down it. I can just feel that there were bats hanging upside down up in that place, further down that, that um I call it a canal, but it's really a sewer pipe that shoots water. And those things can be very dangerous because water can just decide at any time it's going to flow through there and um, you can get caught up in there and, and drown. Shit. <laughs> uh, so, and I've been just intrigued and it's just so funny how now just nothing but you know, uh, videos have been popping up to me of going in these dark places. But anyways, um, there are entities, the entities from hell, okay, that live in caves, underground, and in tunnels. I could, with my mind's eye, see them as I speak to you all. And you might want to know what they look like. They look like Spider-Man. Now I see where these superhero characters come from. You know, Spider-Man climbs up walls and stuff like that. He can just suction his fingers into climbing up walls. That's exactly what those uh, 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 tunnel beings look like. Those trolls, so to speak, what they look like. I think they're a little bit different than trolls. Trolls... Trolls, and these are some of the darkest creatures, but they get darker than that. When I say darker, I mean these are the creatures that uh, most people fear. They fear them because of their appearance. They're frightened of them because a lot of these beings, you know, they don't possess human qualities and they don't have empathy or sympathy, the uh, compassionate emotions that we as humans have. Maybe I I feel like they're elementals, so to speak. They may have always been that way, or who knows? Some of them may have actually possessed human bodies. They're disincarnate spirits right now. That just remains to be seen exactly where their origins come from. But they have been contracted out by some source to inhabit the darkest places. They cannot stand light. Um, when I was th under there, you I couldn't pick it up on camera, so y'all didn't hear it, but you could hear, uh, w one of them. It sounds like it was in charge. I could feel it. I could see it in my mind's eye. It was like, kind of like, you, you could see one of the eyes was out. If you look at that good one, it, it had one eye. You could see the light from it. The camera projected light at it. The, it was a one-eyed creature. It was bald, and uh, it had, the color of it was just dark as the tunnel, but uh, uh, the shape would be kind of frog-like, you know, but still humanoid. And it had a slickness to his skin like, like a frog. Matter of fact, the slickness of his skin could be picked up by the mind's eye, and, and it was illuminating, but anyway... It was saying, who, who, it was asking me who, it, wa it wanted to know who I was. It was startled and defending its territory, you know, as I uh, peered uh, into the uh, entrance way of it. You know what I'm saying? So uh, they go under there at nighttime, you know, I mean, in the daytime because they don't, they don't, they cannot be exposed to light, but at nighttime they inhabit the whole entire skate, and then they run under that tunnel when it get dark. Are y'all sure y'all ready for some hoodoo? Now, what I would have done as my um ancestors speak to me and talk to me about how they went to caves and forests and stuff like that, and woods where it was treacherous late at night, and these, these places like tunnels and shit, uh, that's where you do your work. 
So if I needed to uh, do some dirty work on somebody, you understand? I would go and I would sacrifice a chicken. And I would go in that dark place late at night with holding nothing but a tunnel in my name, in my in my hand. I'm, I was fixing to say to in my name, uh, to my name, just holding just a lantern, probably uh, a little a light headlight on my head. They have those for hikers, and taking the chicken there. And actually doing the sacrifice there and letting the blood flow up in there. And taking the names of my enemies to the tunnel. And I could bring actual harm to them. Or that's the way they brought harm to people. And you will hear, oh, okay, the person, the target um, is afflicted with some illness. Because they didn't try to necessarily kill you in them days. What they wanted to do is to frighten you because you would have all of these events of misfortunes to happen to you and deaths of people that you really care about. You know what I'm saying? A lot. Or they will fall ill. The people you love, they will fall ill. And, you know, but let me tell you something. Hoodoo is one of the darkest practice. And the reason why I say it's one of the darkest, darkest practice because there aren't any I mean, there's no inhibitions in this stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, when you're dealing with someone like this, you know, if even uh, witches are a little bit safer. Um, you know, you, you're more safer sitting down at the table with the wicked witch, with the evil dog, which did you as a hoodoo practitioner. I mean, you you safer going somewhere, sitting out, eating with a, with a voodoo priest or a priestess because they do... Once again, have rules. Witches have rules, but a hoodoo practitioner has no rules. An authentic uh, witch doctor have no rules. There are no rules. Dark magicians, there are no rules. Do as thy willst, basically, is what is in this situation. They have put snakes in people's stomachs. And uh, people say, are the snakes really real? Some of them are really real. Some of those are the snakes of spirits. And they do the same thing. Matter of fact, they're more treacherous than a physical snake. But physical snakes can be in there. They have done x-rays and found gopher rats, uh, musk rats, rats in people's bodies eating on them. They thought they had tumors. Now, how does a rat get in somebody's lungs? I'm going to do a, a little series talking about that in, in a little bit. But anyways, I just wanted to um, just um, chime in uh, with you all. Y'all excuse the hair. Okay. The sun has come out a little bit. <laughs> and I didn't want y'all to see me. But the sun is revealing me. Mm. See what lip gloss does? I put lip gloss on my lips before I go to bed. I just hurried up. To do this video. Skin is peeling. But anyways. Excuse that. But check this out. Y'all ain't no. Y'all ain't no real dog witches out there. Y'all. Uh -uh, no. Mm -mm. Cause see I'm still working on the shit. You know. And I know I'm the leader. I know I got a lot of people. Uh, working under me. Under my uh, apprenticeship. You know, y'all come here to learn. Y'all got to go in some dark places. We need to all get together and uh, uh, go on a, a, a witch's retreat. For real. How many of y'all brave enough to get up with me and go on a witch's retreat? None of y'all. I even tried to do something similar to that five years ago. None of y'all showed up because y'all ain't real. <laughs> Any real witches want to come up under my apprenticeship? So that I can take y'all to some dog places. You got to go to some dog places. So you might even have to be buried. You might have to be buried on the ground for an extended period of time. So you can come up come up out of there more, uh, 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 more powerful than ever. That's what they do. They might put you in a pine box. And uh, uh, bury you under there. Under the ground in that pine box. Let's just do it for one hour. And then go from there, six, twelve.
then go from there to at least 18 to 24 hours. Do it in stages. When you come up out of there, can't nobody do nothing with your ass. Let's start off first in a dark closet. I mean, how many of y'all witches can cut off every light in your house? Late at night and stay in the darkest closet for an hour and just allow the spirits to speak to you. And you'll hear. That's how I got started. When you hear that. It's the spirits. Okay. Anyways, y'all. I'll be back in a little bit. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this a little bit later. Bye-bye.